CCNA section 1.3 is about comparing physical interface and cabling types. The different cabling types are single mode fiber, multimode fiber, and copper. Let's start with fiber optic cables first. Fiber optic cables transmit data using light, not electricity. That's why fiber is immune to electromagnetic interference or EMI, since light is not affected by electromagnetic fields. EMI is caused by things like power lines, fluorescent lights, heavy machinery, and nearby electrical cables. There are different types of fiber optic cables, and let's start with single mode fiber. It is used for long distance, high speed connections. It uses laser light and has a very small core, and the color code is yellow jacket. Here's an example of a single mode fiber usage. Think about the internet from an ISP to a data center. That link might stretch across cities or even further, so you use single mode fiber. It's expensive and requires special transceivers, but it can carry data for kilometers without loss. Then, there's the multimode fiber. It is used for shorter distances, still fast, and cheaper than single mode. It uses LED light and has a larger core compared to single mode fiber. The color code is orange or aqua jacket. An example of using multimode fiber is its use inside buildings or campuses, like connecting IDFs to MDF. Multimode is great for 1 to 10 gig traffic within a few hundred meters. If you run fiber from the first floor to the third floor in an office building, multimode is ideal and budget friendly. Aside from fiber optics, we also use copper cabling or twisted pair. Copper cables transmit electrical signals and can be disrupted by EMI, leading to slower speeds or data corruption unless shielded. They are used for short distance, low cost connections, and the max distance is 100 meters. Copper cables are typically CAT5E, CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7. For color coding, there's no specific jacket color for CCNA, but blue or gray is common. Here's an example of using copper cable. You plug your PC to a switch using Ethernet, and that's copper. Most internal office network connections still rely on copper. And here's a comparison table to summarize the differences of single, multimode fiber, and copper cables. Now, let's discuss when to use fiber versus copper. You use fiber in data centers, industrial environments, or between buildings for long distance with high EMI zones. While you use copper in standard office spaces for shorter, budget-friendly connections where EMI is low. Let's now move on to the next topic, Ethernet shared media versus point-to-point. -point. Let's start with shared media. In a shared media network, all devices use the same bandwidth. And all devices listen to the same broadcast domain, channel, or layer 2. Only one device can transmit at a time. If one device transmits, others must wait because everyone is talking and listening on the same wire. And if two talk at once, there's a collision. It is used by old school hubs and it's outdated because it's slow and collisions are everywhere. There's only one talker at a time. Let's now review Ethernet point-to-point. -point. It is a dedicated link between two network devices. No other devices share this link like a one-on-one -on -one private phone call. No one else is interrupting and this is the standard today. Why is point-to-point -point better? Because there's no collisions, it uses full duplex which can send and receive at the same time, and it's faster and more secure. Which cabling is immune to EMI and better for high security areas? Multiple devices share the same bandwidth and must listen before sending data and common in hubs.
long-distance high bandwidth transmissions using a single beam of light, typically up to 40 plus kilometers. A dedicated link between two devices and common in modern switch networks. Commonly used for Ethernet LANs, good for short distance communication and typically up to 100 meters. An Ethernet hub where all connected devices share 100 Mbps is an example of avoids collisions and allows full duplex communication.